Hi, this is Professor McLaughlin continuing with a introduction to negligence from Melvin's chapter 9 for my management 12A students. Here's where I really feel you all know a lot more than maybe you think you do. If you follow the news or when a tablet catches fire and people sue or there's problems with cars or other product defects. Those are usually claims in court based concepts of negligence or a neg action where an injured party is harmed by a product or an individual and we don't look at intent. We don't ask if a particular act or event precipitated the harm. Instead, we're, we're really just looking at an accident that happened and the law is asking um, if recovery is warranted and the harmed person doesn't need to show that the intended anything bad at negligence is comprised of these elements. A duty owed to an injured party, a duty of care. And you obey duties of care all the time when you do not skateboard on campus, when you observe appropriate lines and lanes when you drive, when you walk, when you're in, when we used to be in the mall, <laughs> when you're walking on the sidewalk. You're observing other people walking near you, other drivers, when you're in the airport, when we used to go to the airport and fly places, we followed lines, we stayed behind marked off areas, and these are all duties of care. Yes, certainly other rules apply. There are motor vehicle rules and TSA rules, but even in Starbucks, you observe a duty of care. You are careful with your coffee to put the lid on so you don't spill it on other people. These duties that we owe one another are understood and not always stated. So a tort fee feeser guilty of negligence has failed in their duty of care and somebody was injured. They breach that duty of care and that breach caused actual harm. A party has suffered. And by cause, we say that there's cause in fact where if I had put the lid on my piping hot Starbucks coffee, I don't drink coffee, but if I did and I went to Starbucks and failed to put the lid on and then I turned quickly in my rush to get out of Starbucks, I spilled my coffee over three people. We would say, well, the cause of hot, wet coffee on three people was, in fact, my failure to put a lid on the coffee, my rushing, my failure to exercise reasonable care with something that could cause harm. And then we want to ask a follow-up question. Was there proximate cause? Was there a link between the breach of duty and the damages suffered by the injured party? Or did something else happen? Did a UFO fly by? which is why I was distracted, didn't put the lid on and turned quickly because I'm very afraid of aliens. Or was there a sudden invasion of zombies that would say there's actually a breakage of the link between my breach of duty and the damages suffered by three people with coffee on them. And then we look at injured parties who have suffered harm. And there are many examples of negligence 
a really, really, in your modern day, a really famous one. Yes, we have cases in your textbook from 1928. Why is that? Because it's a great example of a duty owed, potentially, and a duty breached. What When Mrs. Paul's graph was injured, sorry, when Mrs. Paul's graph was injured by the uh, scale that fell on her while she was standing waiting for a train on the Long Island Railroad line in 1928, um, the scale fell because of an explosion of fireworks as someone was rushing to get on the train. And the question is, was the railroad company liable to a passenger who is injured when something so unforeseen happened that fireworks exploded and tilted over some scales that then fell on poor Mrs. Paul's graph. And what the court was grappling with here is could the railroad be held liable for an injury that could not be foreseen. And I, I think it's okay to include old cases for you to maybe appreciate the development of case law over time, understanding stare decisis, how common law works versus uh, civil law jurisdictions. This tort is a civil law, but we are a common law jurisdiction as opposed to other jurisdictions that don't have jury trials and, and don't have stare decisis and precedent. Um, and to see how things develop over time. And you can maybe fast forward, imagine in your current day, how this would probably never happen. Um, I don't know how many trains you take. Uh, I don't think there are metal detectors or firework detectors when you get off, uh, when you get on the metro in Orange County to go anywhere, but it's possible. I haven't been on that train for a while, but I used to take it. Um, but certainly in other locations and certainly in flying that things would be detected. But if something is hidden and unforeseen, can we hold defendants liable for that? And that is really what this case is talking about. And then another concept in negligence that there might be multiple parties responsible for a harm. And we want to have all those parties held responsible in terms of the percentage that they were responsible for a harm. So potentially maybe could I come up with an example of a medical malpractice case where uh, both a nurse and an anesthesiologist are um, negligent in the treatment of a patient, causing that patient harm. And it's really difficult to tell, and a surgeon, let's in, include everybody, it's really hard to tell whose negligence caused all the harm. And so comparative negligence is a concept that the law uses to help um, determine the final award to the plaintiff and to, for lack of a better, better word, divvy up the, the harm, the, the um, responsibility, really the payment required among the different potential tort feasors. And then another concept with negligence is this idea that you really assumed the risk. So you can't sue me because I told you that bungee jumping was not very safe and you signed potentially a waiver. So let's say no waiver was signed, but you did leap off a bridge attached by a bungee cord 
or maybe something more every day. You played flag football. Do, do people still play flag football? And you were in a weekend league with other people your age and you got hurt. But really, a flag football, maybe you didn't get hurt by contact because people are just grabbing the flag. Maybe you slipped and fell or you pulled a hamstring. And there was a risk of harm inherent in that activity, and you voluntarily participated in that activity. Strict liability torts are for another lecture, and I will see you later online.